So welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're starting a new build. It's a 2004 Silverado 1500. Two wheel drive with the 5.3. It's a pretty clean truck. I picked it up a thousand miles away and it was worth every mile. My biggest challenge on this truck is gonna be finding parts as clean as the truck I'm putting them on. Like everything else, it's dead at the auction. So on our 18 hour trip home, it was charging up the whole time. Let's see if it runs as good as it looks. Dinger, that's a good sign. Sounds pretty good. You know it runs? Let's get it off the trailer. Take a better look at it. Disconnect our jumper cables. Check it out. Buy a truck, get free side. I searched long and hard, but I don't think I can find anything more boring than a 16 year old two wheel drive Chevy truck. So why bother? Well, it's a nice quick job. It has low miles and no rust, which means up here, I can sell this truck really quick. Let's take a look at it, see what we got. Now to everybody down south, this may look like an ordinary car, but up here in the land of corruption and rust, this is what we call a dream. You just don't find them like this up here. So our Chevy truck here was T-boned. It needs two doors, a center post, and a rocker. Probably some interior trim pieces, but we won't know until we get to the part. I said it was going to be a quick build. I give myself four days to get this job done. I would take the plastic off, but we need to keep this build fresh. So we're going to start over there. Let's see what we got over there. So this is our parts truck. It's just as rust free as our other truck and it's got everything we need. We're just going to swap the whole cab rather than piecing in our center post and our rocker. Throw the doors on, this guy will be done. It's already the right color, and the only reason it's gonna take four days instead of two, or even one if I hustle, is we got a little paint work uh, on the roof because it came from Georgia. It's a little dry up there, I guess you could say. And there's a couple dents on the other side. Looks like after they wrecked it, they got a little upset with themselves and punched the side of it. So we gotta fix that. So that's gonna add a couple more days. We're gonna get this thing apart, parts ready to go on our new truck. So in case you were wondering what was wrong with our parts truck, it appears GM trucks love poles as much as Mustangs love crowds. Yeah, I went there. Now why is it a parts truck? Well, it has double the miles of our builder over there. So it's resale isn't as good. It's got all the parts we need. And this one needs a little bit more work. It needs a whole front end, frame and airbags. It's all bolt on stuff, but the way we're building our other truck, so is that one. It all comes down to miles. That's a big selling point. So we're gonna fix one with the lower miles. So the first thing we got to do is a little framework, hillbilly style. We got our Bobcat frame rack hooked up. We're gonna pull the bumper out a little bit, or at least try. All right, that gave us access to get to our bolts. I'm just going to leave the brackets on the frame, it's easier. In the 
pile. Let's see what awaits us in here. frame. Tires were harmed in the making of this video. This concludes our test drive. Now it's time to start pulling it apart. We'll do one door the long way. Pull the door check out. Disconnect the electrical plugs. Unbolt the upper hinge. Unbolt the lower hinge. Lift them off. Repeat four times. This is why I like GM vehicles. Time flies. Must be afternoon already. Look who showed up. I win. Yeah, I never got to put a bolt back in. <laughs> Shows up to trash talk me. Lots of goodies under these seats. Unbolt the rear seats. So much for not having to take out crew cab Chevy seats anymore. Seems like I just did this a few weeks ago. pillar trim off. Pull the A pillar trim off. Pull the bracket off underneath for the dash. And slide the carpet out from under it. Take the air duct off, unbolt the wiring harness, unclip it, slide the padding underneath it, we're going to use everything off of our original cab, the wiring harness is different, this dash is broken, score one for the clean freaks, the afternoon crew found the vacuum. So I'm going to start unbolting everything on the top of the dash. She's going to pull the vents out and unscrew her side. Take out the O handle. And then just pull the dash away from the windshield. It slides into clips up in the front. And we can unbolt the glow box. Wiggle and pull. Pull the weather stripping off.
We're gonna have to change our windshield. Ours is broken. Actually, both trucks are broken. Now you can pull the hood off. In, In the, the pile. pile. I'm going to start pulling the front end off. So I let the afternoon crew loose with the impact. Told her she could remove whatever she wanted off the front end because it all has to come apart. So she just took apart everything that was connected to the front end. If she had a socket, the bolt came out, which is how I learned, so no big deal. In the pile. In the pile. In the pile. In the pile. I'm going to discharge the AC, because believe it or not, there's still something in the system. There she goes again, unbolting everything that'll fit on the impact. A little stress relieving. More stress relieving. In the pile. In the pile. There she goes, more bolts again. In the pile. She let me take some out. In the pile. In the pile. Pull the fender off. In the pile. I'm going to pull the radiator support out a little bit so we can get to some of the bolts in there. In the pile. Professional bucket holder. Get that radiator support a little more. Get our condenser out of there. In the pile. Pull the bracket off above the battery. In the pile. Pull the trans cooler down. We're not going to disconnect the radiator or trans cooler, so it's still drivable. In the pile. The cooling fan's out of the way. In the pile. I'm going to disconnect the battery. Pull it out of there. Now we can take the battery tray out. In the pile. Disconnect the ground strap. Disconnect the electrical box. And its mounting bracket. Unplug all the wiring. take the fender off. She's going to take the fender off. I'll hold the bucket. In the pile. She gets to throw the big parts. Makes her feel like CrossFit. I'll pull the cowl screen and wipers off. 
use my wiper arm removal tool. Unbolt the wiper motor. We had to get to the plug that's underneath. And we got the truck up in the air. Disconnect the shift cable, shifter cable, whatever you want to call it. Rope that makes it change gears. Mr. Air Chisel. No job's complete without him. Now we're going to disconnect Satan's invention from the frame rail. Those three little prong clips, they're evil. Now we can unbolt our body. Now we can disconnect the master cylinder. We'll leave the lines connected so we don't have to bleed the system. Pull the brake booster vacuum line off. Now disconnect the steering shaft. Now we're going to disconnect the heater hoses. And try not to lose the disconnect tool behind the engine in Narnia. Success. So now we're going to lift the cab off. We're just going to lift it up enough to get to our heater box bolts that are behind the engine. This can be done in the truck, but it's a pain. And I want to make sure the body was ready to come off. So we're just going to set it back down on there so I have a place to store it. A lot easier to move it when it's on a frame. And we're gonna do our CrossFit truck push. Gotta build that functional strength. In case you own a Ford. Now we can disconnect our steering column. Pull the knee bolster out of there. Disconnect all our wiring harnesses. Unbolt it. Slide it out of there. Now we can disconnect the dash. Add a few bolts across the top. This is much easier without the windshield, but I didn't feel like taking it out just yet. And we can unbolt the passenger side of the dash. And pull it out. The wiring harness out of our way. We'll make the little one climb through the car. Now we can take our HVAC box out. One last bolt. Okay, two. Our heater box is out. Our cowl's all stripped down. All right, procrastinated long enough. Time to take the windshield out. Cut the molding out of the top. Cut our urethane. There's a link down below to that windshield knife. It's pretty nice. It's got a quick change blade. I got tired of screwing the blades in.
in the pile. Now we pull our third brake light out, get our roof ready for the painter to paint it. It's going to have to be sanded down, primed, and painted. Take our J-nuts off. We'll pull the sun visor out so we can drop the headliner down a little bit. So we can get to the XM antenna that's on the roof. So that's it. We got our cab all ready to go on our new truck. So tune in next week. We'll swap it over and get a better look at our truck. If you don't want to wait till next week, follow me on Instagram. You'll see it sooner. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see the rest of this build. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Or actually, I don't see Convinced engineers are just kids with train horns. Really? Apparently.